What's going on guys? We're back again. Uh, another day of, well, sun, which is nice. Um, we are, we're actually going to put this motor back together. I got new head gaskets, new head bolts, uh, valve spring. I don't know, it's hard to show you, but uh, I'll try my best. If you look, you can see that valve is stuck open. Actually, all six of them are on these cylinder heads. The intake valve's got jammed open. Timing jumped. Cylinders are a little bit meh. But there are no physical markings in on the pistons. Well, a little bit of rust in that one from not sealing it up well, but I'm gonna get this thing sealed up. Uh, I'm gonna probably do a time lapse of putting new valves in this thing. I made the mistake of when I was tearing it apart, I didn't actually mark the buckets for the cams. So now I'm gonna have to measure a million times. Well, the bonus to this is brand new Ford valves. They cost about three dollars a piece. Way cheaper than a complete motor. <laughs> Looks like the tool that I have for doing these valve springs isn't going to work. Uh, I'm going to have to build something to get these valve spring keepers out. Um, as you can see, these things are pretty bad. So I'm going to get to figuring something out on how to get the rest of these springs out of the head so that I can pull these valve, uh, valves out. Well guys, I got six of the intake valves out. Uh, they're all bent. Ended up using a 15 mil socket and old valve spring compressor. I was able to get them out, but without the proper tool, I'm not gonna be able to get them back in. The valve seats actually don't look that bad. They look like I could just clean them up a little bit and maybe a little bit of lapping compound and they should be okay. Which makes me really happy, I guess. On to the other six. We are going to cut out the front cross member and the front coil spring buckets. Um, they kind of suck because these rivets, the rivets suck. I don't have a torch at home, so I gotta kinda... Here's your beer. Oh, thanks. Cut an X, and then use a hammer and punch, and break them away from the frame. So, I don't know if I'm gonna save these coil buckets. If there's anybody that needs them, I'm gonna try. Let me know. seen that or not in the hyperlapse the truck shifted like six inches 
to the right while I was trying to pound the rivets out on the left side frame rail. Scared the shit out of me. I've never had anything move on these on this setup with jack stands, but I remedied that. Where I moved the jack stands and got this truck a little bit more secure, or way more secure than it obviously was, because I need to keep beating the shit out of this frame. I mounted the jack stands closer to where the body is. You can kind of see under there. Uh, got rid of them. They're not on the rims anymore. I think that was the issue, the rounded rims and the jack stands didn't agree with each other. I like to try and be as safe as possible. Sometimes it gets forgotten about, but for the most part, safety is key. This thing's almost stripped and ready, other than the engine support cross member, still in the frame. Both coil buckets are gone. This is my first street strip build actual strip time truck every other truck i built was you know have fun on the street go fast take off from the stoplight as fast as possible uh this one is actually going to see some track time even if i got to tow it to a drag strip i don't know the question is do i two by six the front section of the frame or do we keep it stock front frame front section of the frame roughly three feet back the same on this side about three feet back what i would do is stagger the stock frame with the new two by six section it looks like it's pretty square other than where the power steering was it looks like the factory they kind of just made the framework around the power steering box while keeping it in place i don't want to cut this front cross member out yet without being able to tack in a section of cross bracing and just to keep side to side movement or side to side equal that way i can get a nice front center section i guess what you would call it what's going on guys uh so we're in the shed got it a little bit more cleaned up uh, a little more organized a couple boxes ford ranger parts for sale um basically super small shed uh 10 by 12 i'm gonna use this to build the motor which keep me nice and dry, keep the motor nice and dry, no rain. Um, I won't have to worry about covering it every night. It'll just stay in here and do its thing. Uh, the downfall is I ended up not being able to get the tools to properly install the valve springs. Um, so what I'm going to end up having to do is build a tool that kind of bridges across the cylinder heads and allows me to compress the valve springs. Um, I tried a normal valve spring compression tool and it just, it doesn't fit down in there. You can see in the exhaust, it just, it doesn't work. I was able to use a 15 mil socket on top of the compressor, on top of the valve compressor. It just didn't work. So, I think that's kind of going to be it for this week. I don't know. We'll see if I can get a chance to do some stuff maybe. Because I want to get this uploaded by Friday. Um, if I don't get to get this uploaded by Friday, well, then whatever I get done is what I get done. And then we'll see what happens the week after. Um, I've got front suspension parts on order for... The cross member for the, I can't remember what I ordered parts for. Um. Uh, for the Ford Mustang too. I got parts ordered for that. Um, so we'll see that when they get here. They're coming from Southern Ontario. Uh, that could be days, could be weeks. This stupid pandemic is really 
really annoying. Um, especially ordering parts mostly from the states. Um, this is kind of where I'm at, and if I can get anything done before Friday's upload, then that will be added to this video. If not, sorry guys. I will keep posting content on Instagram, which at Roofless Garage. Lame, because I'm in the shed. Um, but for the most part, other than the motor, this project will be done completely outside. Rain will not happen. I promise you that. Rain will not happen. Uh, basically, any other weather, when I get parts, oh, C4, that's going in the truck. If anybody knows anything for making these things hold more than 600 horsepower, that would be great. Because I'm pretty sure this motor will make 600 horsepower. I mean, today's Wednesday. Let's see what I can do between now and Friday to get this video uploaded Friday night. Again, remember, follow, like, comment, anything you guys want to see coming to this swap. It's going to be different than anything I've seen online. So, anybody else, if you have something to chime in, chime in. If not, then we'll just let it glide. And this is going to be one of the quickest V6 Rangers I've ever seen. One more thing, guys. I completely forgot. Hit that subscribe button. I don't know what's going on, but I completely forgot that. This is new content, new to me, new everything i've never been one to just sit here and talk to a camera first of all but i want to get involved with you guys i want to get involved with this motor swap i want to get involved with completely everything when it comes to the whole the entirety of this build um i want to know what you guys think i want to know what you guys like what you guys don't like if there's something i'm doing wrong or something i could improve on let me know um whether it's the build, the content I'm making, um, this is going to be my second upload uh, ever to YouTube, and I'm just going for it, going all out. We're going to build the, we're going to build the hell out of this '97 Ranger. Um, like I said, fastest V6 that I have seen yet online.